Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get access for free to the exercise performance course where I teach you to squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, do pull-ups, and dips. Not only that, but you will also get the audiobook of the book of Puck, narrated by me, and also the exclusive podcast for members, The Coffee Cast, where we do weekly Q&As. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. Hello. How's this set up? How's that? Is that okay? How's this? I think it's okay. Now you can... It's a full frontal POV. Oh my god. How is everybody doing? I'm doing fan. I'm doing fan. If you be so kind to hit the like button, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Mm. So I didn't really have a topic today until I got into a conversation with one of my clients who was talking about his diet and his... Uh, good morning, Marty. And the availability of food at that time which was very low in protein, high in carbs, and kind of low in fat. So think sandwiches and, well, your your average um, hors d'oeuvres when either visiting a gas station or the, uh, look at that hair, I know, or um, what's that called again? Catering, or when catering is out of your control, so to say. And I asked him, was fasting an option? And he said, well, yes and no. Uh, I couldn't say I didn't want it because then you get the eyes and things like that. I'm like, you couldn't or you didn't want to? To which he honestly said, well, I didn't want to, which is completely understandable. In all honesty, look. I am not going to sit here and say, oh, you know what? Everybody knows what healthy eating is. And everywhere you go, somebody will have something that is in line with your dietary goals. Of course it is, because everybody takes takes you into consideration. They don't. They really don't. And there's a couple of examples on this. Now... The problem is you're going to be kind of the weird guy or the weird man out if you do it like this. And I learned this the hard way. Go read Mastery. And uh, there's a part in there with Benjamin Franklin how at the end of the week, the factory shift did beer all around. Everybody paid for it. He didn't drink. He didn't pay for it. And all of a sudden, things happened in the factory. And he was kind of off off ostracized because of that behavior now i used to have an internship in the beginning of my like fitness days where i was very focused till the point of autism i will be very honest about that um about the diet things like that no i gotta have my quark i gotta have my this i gotta have my that my protein and blah 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 while at internship they mostly ate bread it was like bread and chocolate spread peanut butter Things like that. Just not very like protein-rich, whatever, satiating food. The thing was as well that most of them indeed were like, yeah, ah, overweight, out of shape, not very motivated. There was one who wanted to get back into her wedding dress, so she lost the weight for three weeks and then... Well, you can imagine what happened after that. She probably gained all of it. And there was the one who said, I am, I quote you, I am glad my husband or partner, whatever he was, boyfriend, doesn't work out because that would mean I have to work out too. It's like, oh, really? And I kind of got made fun of for my eating choices eating decisions. I'm not kidding. Now, we 
can now say, oh, that's childish. Because at the time, I really thought it was childish. It's like, really? You're going to make a a big thing out of me eating quark instead of eating bread? I, really? Oh, why do you eat that? Why do you eat that? Look, the, the tuna, I can imagine. The, the tuna was maybe not the brightest thing I've ever done in social occasions where... Well, it was high in protein and like your um, omega-3s or whatever is in fish. I can't remember. So, yeah, I, I can't imagine that. It's like, that's easy pickings. But like the quark. And why don't you eat what we eat? It's like, because I don't want to look or feel like you look and feel. However, through the years, as I discovered intermittent fasting and things like that, I have learned to avoid that moment just that that utter moment of uh well you know awkwardness kind of thing where you're being almost questioned like light bulb in your face why are you not eating what we're eating why are you different because that's the thing right like if you're <sighs> And yes, this this goes with the small things where it's like you are different. You are differing from the norm, so to say. Um, the best thing I've found is just avoid it. Now, even then you will get questions. Right? Like, why aren't you eating? Look, if you want to avoid that, I had a big breakfast. Oh, I'm going out for dinner later today, and I uh, I want to keep my appetite. Just or if you let's say fast every day, just stick with the big breakfast. They they won't ask questions anymore. Like oh, don't you don't go the route of oh, I don't eat that. Like oh, that that is peasant food. How dare you? How dare you present me with such low nutrients, plebeian? Don't don't do that. That that's not gonna end well. Just for the sake of peace, kind of thing. Use the whole heavy breakfast thing because a majority of people are taught that you need to eat three meals to six meals a day because you know what your body's a furnace and you need to get the furnace going. Blah blah blah. Even though like your body never quits processing things. Like even in your sleep, your body is like functioning yeah they look at you you have three heads when you tell them you fast that can't be healthy oh that's the worst one i ever gotten where it's like where i did mention it it's like that can't be healthy it's like dude i can bench press you what do you mean that's not healthy cognitive dissonance but the stupid thing was i mentioned it because in all honesty Every awkward moment created because of my diet choices and, well, life choices was because I couldn't shut up. Not because I said something about it when they didn't ask me, but when they asked me, I didn't shut up. Stvu. <coughs> Sorry, stvu. I'm a man, damn it. <laughs> it's a superpower. It really is. When people ask you, like, Oh, don't you want something, blah, blah, blah. Don't go on the fasting route. Don't go on the I want to be healthy route. Just think of an excuse. But aren't you lying, Jack? Aren't you lying to these people who have the best intent? Yes. Yes, you are. And that is one of the few cases where I'm like, yeah, you know what? Just for the sake of arguments, just think of an excuse. The little white lie, as we like to say, because it is not mainstream to fast or whatever. Look at Cole Robinson, Je Jefferson or Robinson from the snake diet. Now, he's a bit extreme. He was on The Doctors, like this, this um, widely watched program of like four middle-aged white women who scream a lot, who just berated him for even suggesting not eating could be an option like how dare you say that and you're you're promoting anorexia and all these weird things where it's like dude 
how hard is it for your people to understand that body fat is because of an overabundance of calories and not eating is the quickest way to burn fat? But for some odd reason, it was like he was sentencing people to death. It's like, holy shit. So just realize that when you do these things, that is what people are going to think. Now, what should you do in those cases? Well, I just named you one argument or uh, one thing to do just for the sake of argument, lie. Just, it's not like the Christian thing to do. I'm very aware of that. It's not the noble thing to do, but you just live in society where people are lie to about how eating works, okay? Like, I know the Illuminati and blah, 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 World Economic Forum eats the bugs. Dude, what? A friend found out I did a 72-hour fast and then made fun of me. I don't care. Wow. You call that a friend? I mean, I'm the one to talk, by the way. I have one friend who's overweight and I tell him, like, fasting and he's like, no, I don't want to. It's like, Okay, but uh, where was I? Yeah, what else can you do? So the example for me at the internship, I just didn't want to eat their stuff. I didn't want to eat the bread. And mind you, like when they put on like the Shoko spread on their bread, they put the knife in and the entire knife was scraped out and that was put on the bread. It's like, oh my God. Uh, very kind people, by the way. I'm not saying anything about their character. This is just their eating habits. And I just didn't want that. I just did not want that. And I thought to myself, what do I care about more? Ask yourself this. What do you care about more? The opinions of others or your own well-being? What is more important to you at the end of the day? Now, that internship only lasted six months. I can stand six months of ridicule for a lifetime of health. I can. I mean, I'm still jacked. And for, well, at least I'm convinced I'm healthy. I'm not fat, whatever. It's like long-term, I'm not going to see these people ever again. And if I will, I mean, yeah, they will probably still be out of shape. Now, funnily enough, Adler of all people had this happen to her as well. And I believe it was at an outing for her job, they had a, they had a, um, what do you call that? Uh, an event, an event, a job event. And the catering was being provided by the company, but all they had were sandwiches with uh, a Dutch thing called croquette. So a crocket. And I will put that in the chat, like sandwiches, crocket, crocket sandwiches, or, um, like just um, deep fried snacks, deep fried snacks on a sandwich. And Adler told me about that. She's like, I'm not eating that. I told them that. It's like, no, that does not fit with my lifestyle. That does not fit with my diet, blah, blah, blah. Like they didn't even bother finding her something else, which, which in all honesty is not their job. Like a majority of people like eat deep fried food on sandwiches. If you don't do that, well, how dare you? But what Adler did back then even was, I just fasted. She's like, I'm sorry, I'm just going to fast. I am not just for social pressure going to eat that while I know what kind of effect it will have on me. Because, look, you're not going to get fat from one sandwich of deep fried shit. It's not going to happen. Look, everybody falls off the bandwagon every now and then. But the thing is, when you are really reliant on your job, whatever, to provide food, and it's just not in line with your diet, like it's not protein rich or whatever, take the jump and just say, you know what? I'm fasting. Or I had a big breakfast. I had a big breakfast. I'm not hungry. And as soon as you get home or whatever, or have the ability to take care of your own food, make it. Because it is something you need to wonder about. You will be social pressured into stepping away from your diet. 
Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Do you want to be ostracized? Of course not, and you probably won't, depending on the way, depending on the way how you deal with this. Because as we all know, we are social creatures, and the group does not like someone being different. It doesn't like outliers. So how do you deal with that? Well, we just discussed that. Don't make yourself look different. Acknowledge the situation, appreciate what they're offering, and then respectfully, decently decline, which is the best way to deal with that. Because what you're telling me is, I care more about what other people think of me than my own health and wellness, which in the long run is a very, very, very bad choice to make. Now, I get it. You don't want the eyes. You don't want the judgment, whatever. An easy fix would be that you already ate or whatever. But don't take the high ground because they will underestimate your power. Got to do it. But don't take the moral high ground on this one. Like, I don't consume such atrocities. I shall not defile the temple that is my body with your poison. Don't be like that. And don't be like that. Horden Jarbringer. Hello, Horden. Hey, David. Good to see you, sir. So, yeah. This is kind of a very long technical rant on something very simple. The TLDR version is of it, of this. You made a decision to live a healthier life. You're going to be confronted with that at a job, at birthday parties, at family, whatever. And you're going to be confronted by the fact that not everybody has the same healthy lifestyle choices as you. Therefore, the food provided shall not be in line with your goals, macronutrients, whatever. How to deal with that in a decent, respectful manner? You already ate. He had a big breakfast. You're planning a big dinner. And you respectfully decline. Unless you truly care more about what other people think of you and you don't want to be ostracized from the herd. Which kind of is at that point. Which is totally fine with me. But realize then that your diet is going to suffer because of group pressure. Same with alcohol. We had an entire show on alcohol last week that, yes, alcohol is very um, easily to combine with like strength training and muscle building. However, do it in a um, responsible manner. However, Let's say you don't want to drink anymore. Well, prepare that when you go out, some of your friends will say that you've become boring or that you're dull or why aren't you drinking, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's drinking, so why aren't you? Well, because you made a choice. You didn't want certain things. <laughs> TLDR, just, <laughs> just tell people, no, are you trying to make me fat? <laughs> Don't tell them that, Dre. Of course they are. But like I said, same with alcohol. That will happen. That will happen. So my question to you is, what do you care more about? Opinion of others, your own well-being, your own dietary choices. Now, I'm not saying never do it. Of course not. Of course not. But if you're going to succumb to the pressure at work when they're like having sandwiches with deep fried snacks or sugary goods, I'm not kidding. When I did that uh, call center job for the post order company, it's they had. Um, which is a bit of a strategy, like it, the pay wasn't all too well, but you would get treats. It's like, oh, look, 
they've got chocolate biscuits or Snickers or whatever. And they had this giant tray with candy and then go past everybody. And I'm like, oh, no, thank you. Uh, no, thank you. It's like, oh, why don't you want one? I'm like, oh. Having big lunch, have big breakfast. And everybody around me was like consuming the, the, the candy and everything where it's like, you do realize they're bribing you, right? It's like they are masking the circumstances by giving you sweets. It's like, really? And they all, every week they had something. They had something to like keep the plebeians happy. happy. It's like, yeah, I'm not falling for that. But that doesn't mean that once in a while you can indulge in it. I'm not saying here, like, be a saint and don't sin ever. I'm just saying you will probably be socially pressured into falling off the bandwagon more than you deciding to want to indulge in something. And I want you to think of that. Just think about that. Are you somebody who succumbs to social pressure or are you somebody who can say no and keep their back straight? Where it's like, no, no, thank you in a respectful manner and blah, blah, blah. But to yourself, you're kind of thinking, no, I'm not eating that because that is not beneficiary to me and my goals. Think about that. Now look at the chat. Donald J. DeMarco, as a polite Canadian, I had to learn to enjoy when people don't like me not playing along. If I can do it, well, if a Canadian can do it, then everybody can. Krispy Kreme donuts to celebrate birthdays. Oh, God. I'm with Dre. The one is... Oh, yeah. It's on you to not be weak and succumb to social pressure. Well, we've all succumbed once or less to social pressure. I had it with uh, drinking every now and then. You just... It's... um. It's a good vibe. Everybody's having fun. You're like, oh, well, one drink can't hurt, and there you go. Or is that me? I don't have issues. You have issues. <laughs> Spoiler alert, peer pressure doesn't exist unless you acknowledge someone as your peer. Well, the weird thing is, like I said, go read Mastery. People can be, like, petty. People can be real petty, especially in groups. When it's like, oh, you don't drink beer? <sighs> Kind of thing. Hey, Daniel. Hello, sir. Did you see the Eevee? We have decided to evolve it into Umbreon, by the way. Mm -hmm. Fidelis, it's better to be hated for being superior than loved for being inferior. Loved for being inferior. Yeah. Look, I know what you mean. I don't like the way you're saying it. Like, superior and inferior. Not kind of gives off the vibe of I am better than you, you are lesser than I. And this is not about you being better than someone else. This is about you wanting better for yourself. It is about not comparing yourself to others anymore and therefore not caring what others think of you either. Know what I'm saying? Do, do, do. Love Umbreon. Nice. Let's see. Uh, you know what? Some thingamajigs, some housekeeping. Looky here, people. If you become a member like Dan, Chris, Alex, Nonstop Dre. Uh, are there more members in here today? Marty. Of course, Marty. And you will not only get a cool green badge, but by clicking the join button right here, you will also get access to my version of the Book of Pook for free. And the exclusive Coffee Cast podcast where we do weekly Q&As and play Pokemon and you will get a Pokemon named after you. This week, we got an Eevee and we named it after Dan. So yeah, if you're interested in that, go become a member, click the join button and uh, join the community like Chad Elkins. Like Chad Elkins, the best CPA. Have you been, Chad? Hey, Chad, are you free right now? Like, are you available, like, right now? 
If you are, let me know in the chat. Daniel Bell, they constantly have cake, donuts, and all kinds of food at work. Yeah, and are always having weight loss contests and health initiatives. I always crack up on that. Yeah, it's kind of the same here. Like, at my work at the call center, they also, um, what was it? They had, like, this idea bus or idea, like, whatever you want to call it, a thing on the wall, like, letterbox. And me and my uh, manager were once talking about things. And we were looking at the floor. And I look at him. Ooh, nice. Okay, check your Instagram. Check your Instagram. So, okay, we were looking at the floor. And I told my manager, like, yeah, we kind of got an obesity problem, don't we? He's like, Jesus, Jack. I'm like, what? We do, don't we? He looks at me. He's like. Yeah, okay, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Like, yeah, of course I'm not wrong. And then like a couple of days later, he um comes up with this tray of Snickers and brownies and all these other crap. It's like, what the hell? And he comes to me with that plate. He comes to me with that plate. He's like, do you want one? I'm like, you remember what we talked about? He's like, yeah, but you know, <laughs> oh, Daniel, Jesus. He's like, well, you know, Chad, check your Insta. I've slid in his DMs. The topic of discussion was social pressure. Social pressure. I also want to like, since Chad is here, I'm going to share with Chad this. <laughs> If he's interested in that. It's like, this is my new conspiracy theory, Chad. Love it. Love it. Let's see, where is that? I do want like, we're waiting for Chad real quick. And then... Uh, I'm I'm going to tell him about this. Like, hey, Chad, is your girlfriend on birth control? You might want to check that. Like, uh, this might not be a good thing. Let's see. I drank a beer last night. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, Randall. I never said it was. Blue, white. This is better, I think. Uh, pressure, fish or fish food and diet. I don't drink beer. Or breaded foods. On my way. Chad is on his way. Nice. Diet, you just have to make your own food. Yeah, but the thing is, my dear Matt, my dear Matt, you aren't always in the um, occasion. You aren't. You don't. You don't always have the possibilities to make your own food. Like something comes up, you're going somewhere, yada, 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 yada. Like, let's say you have like a, a company party. You're not going to show up with your Tupperware there, you know. If you do, you, you kind of... That is where social dynamics come in. Like, you're not going to be the guy who shows up with his Tupperware rice and broccoli. Oh, but why not? Well, you're going to get questions. You're going to be annoyed because people are going to think you're weird. Trust me. I know. <laughs> Packs and tuna cans. We were just talking about that. Guess what I did at internship years ago? Because I was like, well, I want to get my omega fats in or omega threes. That's the ones. And during like the breaks, I had this small can of tuna. Well, I got it. Oh man, I got the questions. But that was my own dumb mistake. Like who does that? Well, they already think I'm weird. Just own it. Yeah, at that point, just own it, man. At that point. At that point, you just, uh, never mind. Oh, 107. How many pages left? Ooh, not that much. Almost over half. Nice. You know what the beauty about this book is? Well, that you don't have to read, like, the, um, how do you call that? The details. You don't have to read the details. Where... You're reading through the book, and there's like this this star, and it's like, oh look, where a, a note, a footnote. You don't have to read the footnotes, because for some odd reason, uh, the person who wrote this found it necessary 
to make completely irrelevant stories in the footnotes. Like, so far, what I've read is kind of like, okay, this was irrelevant and a waste of time. Don't read this again. But this is a good book on what you want to know. Look who it is. Hey, Jack. How you doing? I am doing well. The world's most handsome CPA in Chicago. <laughs> who just woke up. And this time I'm drinking coffee and, uh, instead of booze. So we're switching. Uh, are you drinking coffee too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my <laughs> afternoon mug. Jack, I wanted to let you know. I got this new laptop two days ago. You are mm -hmm. the very first person I am um, streaming with on it. So Nice. Suck yeah. it, Cappy. Yeah. <laughs> so what's up? Uh, not much. Not much, actually. I've been um, narrating some uh, old school Manosphere stuff, uploading that. Uh, the personal training business is going well. Awesome. Like, beyond my expectations. And I am reading this. How to? Oh, sorry. How how the pill? Oh, oh. So yeah, what's going on with this? Your brain on birth control. Uh -oh. And so friends of mine and I, we follow Carnivore Aurelius on Instagram. He's a bit of an edge lord, and he's a bit extreme with the whole organ meat and things like that. But he has some funny shit posts. But he kept hammering on about the pill, where it's like, oh, the pill is dangerous, and blah, 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 and it makes women weird. And I'm like, now, years ago, I remember Milo Yiannopoulos. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he used to have an article that uh, with the title, Birth Control Makes Women Fat and Crazy. So when I saw Carnivore Aurelius's post, I remembered that article. It's like, what's going on here? Like, what's this thing with birth control? Like, what the hell? So I delved a bit deeper into that narrative, and it turns out, like, the pill, like, hormonally changes women to such a degree where it might even be cause of divorce. Really? Like, their moods just get all disagreeable? No, or? no not their moods. It's who they're attracted to. Oh, yes. Yes, the that pill. Is, yeah. Yup. And I was I was reading it this morning, and if you don't mind, I do want to read this out loud. Let's see where. Uh... I think I know what you're about to say. Yeah. Two women, blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. So this is chapter five. Sexy is in the eye of the pill taker. Most of us would probably agree that attraction, love, sex, and marriage are the kinds of things that qualify for big deal status in a person's life. And since they're a big deal, these aren't the sort of things that we would want our birth control pills to mess with. But of course, they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> Consider the experiences of Olivia and Annalisa. Two women who were on the pill when they chose their partners and then went off it. Olivia is a 35-year-old attorney who has been married for 10 years. She met her husband in law school and married him a few years later. At the time she met him, she was on the pill, as she had been since her senior year in college. Although her relationship with her husband had never been intensely passionate, she never felt it needed to be, she actually prided herself on the fact that she was no longer distracted by men and sex, here it comes, the way she had been in early college years. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oof. Oof. She was very focused on her career and felt like she couldn't be bothered by the types of intensely sexual relationships that she'd had earlier. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> That's a terrible sequence of events there. <laughs> it's like, holy shit! <laughs> like, Red Pill is right. Again, part 287. <laughs> Gosh. But, okay, she goes on. She had sex with her husband regularly, but she was indifferent about it. She didn't yeah. spend time thinking about sex. She had regularly told her girlfriends that she could never have sex again, and it wouldn't bother her at all. She felt like she had moved beyond the whims of attraction and desire, both of which took up a lot of her mental energy when she was younger. 
Jeez. So this is like confirmation of Alpha Seed Beta, beta Need, need. Yep. in a nutshell. But now it's con- it now it's like being uh, influenced by one of the most taken drugs in the world. Yep. Holy shit. Now I ain't saying. I'm just saying. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, th- th- I've heard people say that the pill is a big reason why we're having so many problems today, like in the dating market and in, in the marriage, you know, marriage is breaking up. So I, I believe that. And I bet that's an interesting read. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. It's like, holy shit, I never knew this. But apparently they even did studies on like women, like uh, uh, a peer group of women off the pill. And they did tests with photographs where it's like, okay, who do you deem as attractive? Mm -hmm. And well, the majority were like, okay, man with like cheekbones and the jawline and the frown and the blah, 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 all the masculine traits. And then they had a couple of those women of that peer group go on the pill. And three months later, they tested it again. Guess what? They were suddenly attracted to the dudes (laughs) differently. (laughs) <laughs> yep, to the more feminine men with yep. smaller jawlines, um, less frown, and more of a like, well, pudgy attitude kind of thing. Providers. Providers, yeah. Yeah, well, to, to put it bluntly, they were more attracted to providers. <laughs> and it it is such an interesting read where it's like, what? What? How far along are you? Have you finished it? Or? Halfway. 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 <laughs> I love this. I love this. It's like I keep finding things in this book where it's like, hey, Rolo talks about this. Put it on Instagram. Hey, Rolo, you were right. Number 15. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> but the weird thing is, like, she writes this. She is an ideologue. You can read that. The, the woman who wrote this is an ideologue. But the beauty mm. of it is, like, she has to write the scientific facts. But then she comes with an appeal to emotion to rationalize it. Like, well, you you know, might be true that like birth control messes with your hormones and the man you find attractive. But, you know, it made it possible for you to get a degree. Right? (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of those things where it's like, hmm. Not Mm. quite seeing the correlation on that one. uh... No. (laughs) So that's what I've been uh, doing, diving into the rabbit hole of the pill. Nice. But it's like, at a certain point, it's like, wait a minute, I've dated girls on the pill. Am I feminine? What the hell? Am I ugly? What happened? No. But it's like, I've also dated women who were off the pill. So it's like, okay, it it balances out. But it does kind of, I'm not saying it explains it fully, but it shines a new light on the whole soy men and women dating a lot of these wimps and millennials still having less and less sex. Oh, well, nice. Um, oh, let me, John, good luck, man. I mean, that was the, actually the, I found that to be the easiest section because uh, there's really no numbers, but I think you'll do fine. <laughs> there's uh, just for background, there's four exams when you were getting the CPA and he's sitting for one of them called audit, which it's just memorization. It's all boring. I did. I just accounting. So studying for it's terrible, man. <laughs> ah, I can imagine. I mean, knowing about it is important. Like how much money do I need to earn to never be audited? Because I've got a hunch that like when you earn too little, you're an easy target, but when you earn too much, they can get too much off of you not to let you go. So there must be a middle ground there somewhere where it's like, yeah, we can get better. We can get easier targets. So the trick is, uh, at least in the (laughs) U.S., it's it's less about becoming a target and more about making sure the computer processes it. You just want to make sure no human being can look at your tax return, you know, because it's all automatic here. So if you have a business... You want to owe some taxes, but not too much taxes. As long as you owe a little bit, you'll slide through the computer. So here it's less about numbers and more about just making sure, you know, it goes straight through the system undetected. Mm-hmm. I know what you mean. I, yeah. I, can, I, can, I can understand that. Like they are now having a law. They're trying to get a law passed in the Netherlands that all payments 
above 100 euros need to be registered. Wow. They're so going... here, they're, here they're trying to do that with 600 bucks, you know, and then they'll issue a 1099. 100, that's just, that's insane. That's that's ridiculous. That's too much oversight. Yep. Yep. But they're trying to get it through. It's like uh, that that whole conspiracy theory about the, the WEF and things like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not far away from... Uh, it's not far away from wrong these days. Goddamn camera. There we go. That's better. <laughs> yeah, it sometimes does that because like, I hit the USB port and all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, you don't have a camera anymore. It's like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, they're trying to pass that through. But like you said, that's going to be an awful lot of work. It is. I, I don't see that going through. Even the government people are going to be like, we don't want to sort through a thousand of these things. <laughs> so... I mean, if it does pass, it's not going to be effectively, you know, enforced. Yeah, but hey, guess who thought of it? Who did think of that? Well, our new minister of finance, who just happens to be a woman. Just saying. Uh, oh, man. No. Nope. Are you surprised? Micromanaging does not work. And yes, that is a little bit of a female take on some things when it's not necessary. Sometimes. Uh, she is absolutely, she's absolutely terrible. As soon as she entered, like... Um, the house, it was nothing but terrible. Where it's like, people can't say what they want to say anymore because she's offended. I was listening, um, this was just yesterday, uh, Coach Red Pill, his name's Gonzalo Lira on YouTube now. He was saying that, he was telling, he was talking about all the inflation rates in Europe and in the Netherlands, I think y'all were the highest. 17 right? point, Jeez. 17 point something, 17 point one, I believe. God, do you think that's accurate? Because he was saying he thinks it's accurate for the Netherlands, but not for the other countries like Germany and France. He thinks they're understating it. There. Germany was around 10, 10 yeah. I believe. Something like that. Uh, is it accurate? Yeah. It's yeah, pretty, pretty accurate. Much. Like my grocery bill doubled. God. That's like that's like fucking insane. Yeah, and it's probably just like it is here. It probably costs more to buy healthy food from the grocery store than the sugary processed well, crap. What they deem healthy is not what I deem healthy. Like my steak, like mm. they they are now pushing for um, the inhabitants, the plebeians, to not eat more than two hundred grams of meat a week. What to save the environment? I am oh. not kidding. <laughs> These are actual yeah. articles in the Netherlands right now. Like, you shouldn't eat more than 200 grams of meat per week. Here I am eating 700 grams of steak every day where it's like, uh, hmm, yeah, how about fuck you? Yeah, that's that's insane. I can't believe they're already – they're putting those kinds of austerity measures. Don't eat too much meat. Oh, man, they're banning, um, they're banning meat advertisement in certain townships. What? Look up Harlem. Uh, H-A-A-R-L-E-M. Harlan. Banning meat. Harlan. Yeah. Harlan banning. <laughs> Dutch city is banning some meat advertisements in an yep. effort to... Cur oh, that is horrible. Yep. Oh, my goodness. And it's the first in the world to do this. Well, congratulations, man. Um, I hope you don't live too close to that place. <laughs> oh, I don't actually. That's all nope. in the West. That's like our California, like Amsterdam oh, okay. and Harlem, The Hague. That can all be separated and pushed back into the ocean in Minecraft. <laughs> no, but it, it's, I don't know, man. Like when you read the news, it really is getting bad here. Like, that's what it looks like when I hear anything about where you live. It's none of it seems to be good. No, but like certain political parties are just being shut out. They're being zeroed out mm -hmm. for like the the dumbest of reasons. And when you look at how media is just reaching for anything. So apparently one of the members of this political party he was questioned by a journalist because his party leader said, our government is run by reptiles. And he meant figuratively, like, these are just disgusting people. And a couple of weeks before that, somebody said that they should liquidate 
that party leader. And that was not a metaphor because liquidating only has like two meanings. One means for companies and things like that. And the other means like to execute. Yeah, death. And the yeah, the guy meant death. And that journalist all of a sudden all of a sudden went, Hey, did you know that even though you say reptiles has a different meaning, like liquidation does too? And the guy being questioned said, Oh, I was not known. Uh, I did not know this fact, but if that is true, I would be happy to look it up. Well, he looked it up. He found out that was a lie. So what he did was confront that journalist who tried to bait him. So he did that also with a camera and things like that. Our entire parliament lost their shit because they said it was intimidation. Intimidation. Oh, come on. And they suspended the party for that. Like, you're doing intimidating things and blah, blah, blah. And you're anti-Semites, even though the party leader is married to a Jew. But God. So that's how far it's getting in the Netherlands. It's it's insane. God, yeah. I I tell you, I are you concerned? I You actually, you and Rob actually talked about this, I think it was a few weeks ago on Red Evening. But I was curious, like, are you at all concerned with winter coming, like energy prices and being able to keep everything heated? Uh, no, not too much because mm -hmm. that was a lot of fear, a lot of FUD, mm -hmm. fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Because the last couple of weeks, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, energy all of a sudden is cheaper, and oh, right. we did find a solution for gas, so it was all a big hubbub job. And Good. they have these energy companies, um, giving subsidies to certain people and whatever, and it's like, yeah, so. There will be some people, and this is the weird thing, and I don't know if I told Rob, and if not, I'm telling you. Um, there were a lot of articles, a lot of these sympathy articles, where it's like, oh, look at these people not being able to afford anything, or look at these people going to face a very hard winter. <laughs> and then you find out they leave the heating on at night. Mm. And it's always at 21 degrees. I don't know what that is in, in uh, your measurements. But so it's pretty warm, mm -hmm. sort of say. And then it's like, yeah, no fucking wonder you have a high energy bill. Like who leaves the heater on at night? Who does that? And then people are like, well, they're telling us we can't put on the heater at night. And how dare they? And blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, that is just some, you know, good advice. It's actually pretty retarded to leave it on at night. but. Part of what I do is I have to analyze people's finances because a lot of them are broke and they don't know why. And every time I do this, you know, they're like spending every they do shit like they go to Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts, you know, every single morning, spend five or six bucks on a latte. You know, they go out to lunch every day. It's like people complain that they're struggling financially, but they have all these horrible habits like what you Hold just on. said. Yeah, bring it up. Bring it up, Chad. Yeah. Who's in the chat? Oh, <laughs> look at him. What's up? Look at this man. Look at Charlie Sheen. Look at this. Oh, as I live and breathe, Mr. Fresh and Fit himself. <laughs> check out check out that dope shirt. Look at that, huh? Okay, okay. Uh, it yeah. does suit you. It does oh. suit like the middle-aged single 40 man. Yeah, gay Mexicans. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> How's my audio? I'm, I'm at a train station. I don't mean to bring bad audio or anything like that. So it's am I all right? Fine. It's fine. It's fine. They have trains in Miami. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, they got a they got a shuttle. It's just like the L. It's above ground. It shoots out to the airport, and then they got a loop just like downtown Chicago. And so uh, I'm taking the train. Two dollars twenty five cents to get me to the airport. Nice. That that tickles my Jewish fancies. Like it's the, a, the oh, one. Yeah, the one I yeah. take all the time. Yep, as it should. Oh, those what are you guys are... doing? What are you guys doing a show? What's going on? Is this the thing? Yeah, this is the thing. The usual oh, cool. thing. I just popped in. I'm just hanging out, you know. Mm -hmm. cool. Here I was talking about social pressure. All of a sudden, Chad's in the chat, and then I start bringing him down the rabbit hole of the birth control <laughs> pill. And now we're talking about finances. And now all of a sudden, we've got a Jewish representation. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm here to represent many, uh, many tribes, many groups. <laughs> but, uh... Well, cool. I, well, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead, continue on with your conversation. Oh, no, no, you're not interrupting anything. Like Chad and I were just talking about like inflation. Um, well, inflation. <laughs> yeah, that's one. 
and people not being able to actually handle their money or making yeah. responsible decisions about their heating and leaving it on at night and then complaining it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I tune into this podcast uh, where it's a CPA and he complains regularly about people who make bad financial decisions. Oh, you should tune in. I'm doing a show tonight. I had to fire a client a couple of nights ago. Uh, you guys should tune in for that. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, the, the candidate said I should tune in. So um, what you're going live, what, uh, 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Central. Central, yeah. Uh, if you feel I, up to joining. So I, I, I might, but I think I'm going to be in Dallas, Fort Worth, an airport you're very familiar with. <laughs> yeah. But I'll, uh, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely tune in uh, if I can. So it, that'd be kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, I'm on the long slog back home. Because could you believe there's no direct flights from Miami to Rapid City? Could you believe that? That's just criminal, man. I mean, everybody from Rapid City goes to Miami regularly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but but like, anyway, how long did you uh, stay in Miami? Uh, not even 48 hours. I did the Fresh and Fit show yesterday. Uh, in and out. And that was it. And... Um, I'm getting old because they're like, hey, do you want to do after hours with the girls? I'm like, nope, absolutely do not want to do the after show with the girls. And um, they they had the girls in the back. And I'm like, you know, like those are the ones that show up. Uh, and, and just this is supposed to be like the hottest, bestest group of American women is Miami. And I'm like, no, no, I'm just not. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm getting old. And even in business purposes, I pretty much want nothing to do with them because it's it's kind of a bleep show out here, so. So like the long finger, the the long ass yeah. wiping nails and shit like that. You got that. it. You oh. got it. And you know, admittedly, that's that's the the three hundred fours they get. But just even walking around, I mean, yeah, there's some good looking gals, but they're buried in their phones. And I'm I'm like, no, I miss the '80s and the '90s. I I miss it when girls had dresses on and weren't like looking at that. But yeah, it's. It, they uh, flaked it was a good on those time. dudes, didn't they? They flaked and they didn't. Some of them flaked, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, but that that's a given. There's always a percentage that flakes. So now sit down, guys. Did you know girls are not reliable <laughs> if they're 304s? Did you know that some of them um, – and just, yeah, it's – it's. Uh, but they smell goes. so nice. No, they – no. <laughs> no they, don't, they don't even do that anymore? <laughs> uh, I, I didn't get close. Um but you just look at them. I'm like, man, you came from the trailer park and don't know your way back home, do you? Like, you <laughs> don't know where you are, are you, sweetheart? And, uh, they got their yeah. name tattooed on their arm. Like, this yeah. is my name. Bring me back. No, no. So, anyway, I'm gonna go and see if there is a. Uh... Hang on, oh, 14 old. minutes. 14 minutes <laughs> until the next train, so I got some time, so I can stick oh, around. Okay. Good. But if you want to go find the glory hole, just go ahead. We respect your choices. No, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the gay the gay community is probably better looking than the straight girl community here. At least at least guys, the gay community put their effort into some physique. But um, yeah, I, have have now, uh, Chad? Have you been to Miami? You said you were kicking around coming down here one time. I was just going to ask you if it was worth it for me and perhaps the candidate to spend a few days down there. Yeah, to check it out. Um, yeah. I, I think you would enjoy the Brickell district. I haven't yes, really Brickell. traveled much beyond that. Um, it's worth it to, you'd enjoy your visit, no doubt about it. Um, but I don't know if this would be a place for you guys to live. Who knows? You guys might like it, but you'd have to come down here and visit. Mm -hmm. Um, and Jack, you were, you only flew into Philadelphia, right? Cause you're going to yep. get the girls there. Yeah. Well, how, how'd that <laughs> strategy go? You were going to get some Philly girls, huh? Well, in all honesty, there were some good-looking girls, and yeah. the population wasn't more fat than the Netherlands. Now, really? that's saying and something about the Netherlands. Really? I mean, the Netherlands is pretty shit, too. Okay. All right. Well, but we saw some good-looking girls there. Where it's like, holy shit. How many of them talked to you? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> I opened a couple, though. I opened a couple. And you'll be surprised how good Wingman, Vince, and Rob are. That is oh, just, without it, without a doubt, it. yeah, yeah. I, I believe it. Yeah, I mean, did Rare they largely control. pick on you? I mean, the 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 easiest thing to be a wingman is to pick on you a little bit, but also sing your praises. Like hidden in there is like, yeah, you're an okay F-16 fighter pilot, you know, for a gay guy or something like that. <laughs> if they say something like that. Oh yeah, of course. But it's like it's just singing your praises. 
Like, did you know Jack also narrates audiobooks? Just Vince just went yep. off and fluffed me yep. and here and that. Like, Vince, don't do that. He's wow. like, oh, don't mind Jack. He gets shy, but he's great. And blah, blah. It's like, yeah. God damn it. See, Rob is a great wingman because he is so short and ugly. You look great next to him. I mean, <laughs> Rob is the best wingman. That's <laughs> he's also kind of fearless, right? Like, he'll probably just walk. Oh, Rob's anyway. great. Yeah, Rob. Yeah. Would, Rob, would, yeah. He'll, he'll get the social circle going. Uh, I, we, we pick on Rob, but there's no doubt. Funnily there's, enough, in Philly, that was mostly me. Really? Opening up people? Yeah. yeah, because I mean, I mean I'm mean, i there for just a week. I'm Dutch. Who cares? Yeah. Just, yeah. I, I just went walking around and walking off to people, and then Rob was like, who are you talking to now? I'm like, oh, that one, and oh, that one. It's, did you uh, Did you get any – did your accent help at all? Was there any uh, leverage there? Mm, not a whole lot. Mm, interesting. Not a whole lot. Oh. Well, they didn't uh, at I don't least know. ask, you know, are, you're not from around here, are you, or something like nope. that? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Jeez. Nope. I, but, I, uh, have a question. I have a question about the Netherlands and Chad. I'm pretty sure it's the same in Chicago. But are the girls all wearing these pants up to their abdomen? Yep. Yeah. Because they would, they would rather pull up their pants 20 centimeters than lose five kilos. That's is that why, why they're doing it? They put because they, yep. it only yeah. exposes their gut more. That was all. That's all they do down here in Miami is they have pants up to the diaphragm. It yeah. hides the fupa. It's really bad oh. at the gym. They wear those things where it's like hiding their stomachs. But like you said, you can. It sort of compresses it, so it yep. does make sense. I, yeah, I. Uh, I kind of you come here and you think like, yeah, it's going to be some good looking girls and and no, and so I I did have an enjoyable run on the ocean. That was really cool. So that, uh, but uh, I think, yeah, both of you guys should come to Miami. Uh, Chad, especially, you know, guys, check it out. If for anything, a weekend. Mm. Um, because then that way I know you can hop a flight to Rapid City as well. <laughs> so that, that would prove that you could make it out there as well. Hmm. That's funny. You're going through DFW. If you get stranded, you know where to go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still a long haul out to Fort Worth, though. Um, yeah, hop on the train. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice train, but I I don't know. I I kind of I do know I don't like traveling anymore. Uh, it was aw. it was it was fun in my thirties, but now it's like no, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, not that I you guys remember DT, that guy who had a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember and, him. Yeah, Airport. and only through my only through my charity and kindness did he actually get a thousand subscribers, and he never monetized. It was a, a, an incomplete pissing away of time. Uh, I'm almost coming around to his. Uh, opinion that traveling or leaving the house is bad. Not not that I'd ever not leave the house, but um, I could see where it's like, yeah, maybe I just want to stay in. Uh, but yeah, so but like, I just want to. You, hmm. Are you two still friends, or is that just? No, we're not friends. I mean, we're okay. not enemies. I just, yeah, I just, it, it's after, like you broke a bro code. Like, no, I can't pick you up at the airport. Or I can't leave. Cre like Jack, if you ever came here. Is there any doubt you'd have free lodging? Yeah, I, that's not something I worry yeah. about. <laughs> or do you, if you need to be picked up at the year, I mean, any kind of simple stuff. And it's like, yeah, I, no, no, just hmm. it's it's not, it's not, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I travel every two weeks, dude. So I, I feel your pain. It's starting to get, <laughs> it's, it's rough. Well, then, and don't you have a, a dentist friend in the field who gives you a ride to the airport all the time? Every so often, yeah. Right. He's actually learning to fly himself. So. Mm. Oh, yeah. cool. Right. Mm -hmm. like, well, Cappy, how long is that train ride? The train ride is uh, 23 minutes. That's not bad For at all. 290, uh, what was 225. it? 225. 225. That's wow. cheap. Oh, it's subsidized. The taxpayer is subsidizing me. That's half the reason I take the bus in Vegas because for, I think, two bucks, I can make it all the way to Henderson. That's uh, a lot can't... cheaper than here, the socialist utopia. Well, you guys all know what you're doing. Forget America and what we know. You guys don't yeah. even have a defense budget because we do everything for you. It's, it's, oh, I, love man, watching, I, I love watching Europeans try to adult. <laughs> <laughs> I so hate that argument every time somebody brings up the military-industrial complex. It's like, yes, America spends so much on the military because they're covering our fucking ass. Right. <laughs> yeah. And like the rest was, of Europe. 
Like if I was Canada, if I was president, I'd be like, oh yeah, hey Trudeau. I like I'd have it like we're not protecting as long as you got someone from like the Liberal Party, we're not protecting you. I, I'll tell it's like Putin, go invade. We're not gonna do anything. You go ahead and do that. Yeah. Although but I get like, Ryan Stone out of there. Uh, <laughs> would we? Would we then? Yeah, unfortunately, we probably. Uh, have okay, Stone. he's a, he's one of the good ones. What about Rich Cooper? Yeah, we get Coop out. We get him out. I, I want to. Hmm. Wouldn't it piss off a lot more people if we kept him there? I mean, Rich can manage on his own. I mean, he'd be warlord within a week. Maybe, yeah. Right. Don't count Stone out. He was ex-military. Huh. That would be yeah. fun. <laughs> like those two running Canada. But uh, I'll point out again, if Ryan Stone or Rich Cooper or any one of those guys were in need and like, oh, I need to escape Canada, you got a place to crash, what would I say? Of course. I would say, yes, here's, we'd have to get an extension for the couch for Rich, but, you know, like, yeah, was, <laughs> here's your place to sleep. Absolutely. Are you doing Rule Zero this weekend? Um, maybe. Mm. I don't know. I, I would like to not do it because I, uh, I got to start working in on my taxes. Uh -huh. and the, only reason, the only reason I'm doing that is because then I fly to Vegas. So I want to not carry a box of receipts to Vegas. So right. I only have, like, the remnants. So I got to do that. Um, I want to enjoy life. I don't want to work all the time. Yep. And I and I'd like to do my own podcast one of these days, uh, which I haven't done probably in two or three weeks. Um, but yeah, I I just I need a little bit more downtime. It was only two weeks ago we finished the closet, so I um yeah I I could definitely go gamble and and ride a motorcycle if it's warm out and get some hiking in. But I uh, I don't think I'll be I might if I'm bored, but uh, mm. I Do definitely you hear that, Chad. He is so <laughs> tired of podcasting, sitting behind his laptop, screaming at millennials. Oh my God! He's this got is... a Clary's got a tough <sighs> life right now. Well, I mean, he <laughs> is of the oppressed people. Thousands <laughs> of years of oppression coming down on him. Are you guys getting oh it all God. out? Are you, get, are you guys getting it all out? Let me know. Let me know when you're done. I'll start paying attention. Well, I'm saving mine for tonight when I do my show. Set my <laughs> people free. <laughs> You know I'm only a quarter. Like, you know, I, I don't go to synagogue oh, or anything. It, it's... <laughs> Although I'm more yeah. proud of that than I am my Scandinavian heritage because, you know, at least, at least the Israelis fight every once in a while, you know. <laughs> Sven. Uh, you, you'd think you'd be taller for the Scandinavian genes. Boy, but... I did get screwed in that, didn't I? I really yeah. got screwed on that, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, that was not fair. That was not fair at all. But, uh, eh, what are you going to do? Not much. Dung is fun for two dollars. Cappy, where's your Ford hat? Uh, I got my Snoopy hat today. Snoopy, no. <laughs> it Alabama. doesn't. It doesn't go with my my gay Mexican shirt. It doesn't. <laughs> That's uh, a great travel shirt because of the pockets in the front. I love those shirts. I got a lot of compliments on it. Um, a lot of people enjoy the shirt. It's I was nice just shirt. about to ask how many guys hit on you while you were there. None. None. I don't. I don't think. I don't think we're in the gay district. I don't think the gay district is here. It must be elsewhere. Um, hmm. But um, you, you'll find that when you come visit Jack, no doubt. Uh, God damn it. Are well, you, you know telling me like. girls gave you compliments? You? No, no, no. Only guys. It, it was kind of funny because, you know, I'm on Fresh and Fit. And you're watching, obviously, it's a guy thing. But then, my uh, not Myron, Fresh was getting me to look at my uh, – Instagram because it's younger people and it's it's just it's just a sausage fest and I always even look at it, some of the pictures where I'm presentable you know not giving the finger or anything man girls just could not care less about a well-dressed man they they have I'm, I'm so thoroughly convinced of this right now but we do not exist to them unless you are absolutely like a six-foot chap uh, so, just saying uh, not even then <laughs> Damn. Not even, yeah, well, we're talking about, like, even these guys are talking about, because they're pretty much, they're pushing A-list celebrity famous, you know, they're a they're big deal, and even those guys get blown, everyone does, even they get blown out, and they're like, yeah, there's there's something in the water, I'm like, yeah, there is something in the water, but um, it was further reconfirmed <laughs> to me, what's that? We were talking about how this the, before you came on. How the pill changed everything, how old is that book? That book is not even that old. How old are you? 2019. Oh, that is it good? Is it a good book? 
I think it's great. It explains a lot of uh, behavioral changes in women, even who they find attractive. Who do they find attractive? I figure it'd just be their own that, reflection in a mirror. No, no, no. That apparently, like, women off the pill tend to find more masculine men attractive, and women no. on the pill tend to find more feminine men attractive, even to the point where a lot of women who go off the pill, compared to when they met their partner, divorce him because they no longer find him attractive. No. It's no. all in here. It is all in here. I'm going to get... Do we know the person that wrote that book? Uh, Sarah E. Hill. I don't oh my know God, her. a woman, a traitor. Did they kill her yet? No, because she writes it from an ideological perspective. So it's funny because it's all the empirical data. She has to explain that. And then she tries to rationalize it ideologically. Like, okay, so she, well, she has, she's a leftist feminist type and she's yeah. reverse. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'll just go for the data, but I will take a look at that book. That's very interesting. It is. It is very interesting. Wait, is it on Audible? Uh, I think it is. Oh, it good. Then I don't is. have to read. Oh, that'd be great. That would be great. So. All right, well, listen, guys, I'm going to go catch a bus here, or a oh, train, rather. Real quick, Dre with $2. Yeah. Watch out, Cappy. We will get your we'll get your canceled bank account. So they'll cancel your bank account is what they mean, I think. Well, sounds good. All right, I'll see you guys later. Chat, I'll try okay, to see in. ya. All right, All see you, Homo. Bye-bye. There he goes. That was Cappy. That was fun. Unexpected surprise. <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere, he texted me. I just want to tell you you're gay. It's like, ah, oh, well. <laughs> I thought he was watching us, so probably he just wanted to talk to us. Does he do that with you, too? He just out of nowhere, starts giving you names, and it's like, oh, he misses me. Well, so I did my show last week, and I was alone. You know, sometimes Clary's there, sometimes he's not. And all of a sudden, towards the end of it, he starts showing up, like, you know, giving super chats, like calling me gay. So I'm like, dude, if you're going to give super chats, you can call me gay all you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I, I had that with the F thing, where I couldn't say truth, as you oh, are yeah. supposed to say it. And Atham was giving me super chats. I was like, holy shit, I can monetize on this. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want the mug, the link is in the chat. <laughs> roof oh i did like that prank did taught me how to actually pronounce the th which mm -hmm. i'm very happy with it it saves a lot of trouble with narrating i have to get to, you were talking about the book of poop you just put it in there i gotta find a way to get that that sounds interesting yeah, you're a youtube member you just go yeah. to my channel you go to the membership community tab and there are multiple posts there with the link nice i'll check it out yeah. I've heard a lot of things about it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. And if you want to get access to it, click the join button on the right and you get access to the free, my version of the Book of Book audiobook for free and weekly Q&As. So people, you want to get it, go get it there. So what are your plans today? You just woke up. Day is just starting. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm going to eat, hit the gym. Today's a lifting day. So, you know, good. I'm trying to be like you, Jack. Um <laughs> And then after that, I've got some work to do. Uh, and I want to do, I haven't, I probably, let me ask you this, Jack. How mm -hmm. much preparation do you put in when you're about to do a stream? Like, do you spend a lot of time making an outline or you just kind of do it? I wing it as you I do most it. things in life. <laughs> it's part of my personality. I need to learn to wing my show a little bit more because I think I probably put too much prep into it. That's what I'm going to do like a couple hours before I go on as I you know, outline, and uh, maybe I should try not doing that. I just feel like I have to be prepared, you know? I always wonder how Cappy does it. I just think he wings it as well. He just does it so off the cuff. I mean, and I feel like that takes skill, and I'm still really new at this, so, you know, at some point I just have to not prep and jump on like you do and just chat, you know? Mm. No, I, I never prep, in all honesty. Mm. I mean, do I look like a guy with a plan? <laughs> because well, i'm skill. not it's a skill i need to learn how you guys do it you know have the confidence to just jump in and start talking i mean it's i'm not going to talk about things i don't know about that's one where it's like there are just certain things i am convinced i know and i know i'm right mm -hmm. and then talking about it becomes easy mm -hmm. because well I, my thoughts about it have been proven. And if I found something new like this book, 
uh, I'm not going to talk about it as fact, but it's more like, oh, I've been reading this and mm -hmm. this is what I've been discovering. Now, don't hold me to it because it might be wrong, but it is certainly fascinating. Then I just go from that perspective of interest. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then some someone brings up the geeky shit of the Pokemon cards and things like that. And then we go off and we're 35 minutes later. And it's like, oh, it's already time to end it. And then, well, yeah. <laughs> nice. I got to try to tune into your Red Evenings live. It's a little hard to do them live, but I want to. So. Oh, nice. Oh, we never prep for those. That is yeah. seriously, Rob and I uh, get into StreamYards five minutes beforehand we talk a little bit, punch it live, and we go where we left off. Nice. Yeah, that Red Evening seriously is nothing more than two friends meeting on a Friday night and or Saturday morning. Chatting. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And every now and then, I kind of have a topic where it's like, Rob, Rob, I want to share this with you. And then he's like, oh, well, tell me about it then, yeah. <laughs> and, then he, and then he gives me guff. It's like, oh, okay. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Pokemon, Lego. We have a ton of material to divert to. That <laughs> usually happens. Like, even in my, like, my, my um, monthly uh, accountability, accountability program, I have this thing in our Discord, which is everything but lifting Star Wars, yes. Legos, uh, Gundam. A lot of guys are into Gundam. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, it's just. I am amazed how many geeky guys there are in this sphere. It's like it's not all Lambo driving, weightlifting millionaires no. who don't talk about that. It's like, and I think there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Oh, me neither. Yeah, me neither. I, I, I kind of, you know, Matt Walsh. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I like his takes on some things, but then he goes off on this: Why would you dress up for Halloween? You're an adult. It's like, so? That doesn't mean I can't have fun. Yeah, it's fun to do that. It's like, I don't understand why you would do that as an adult. You're a responsible black. It's like, oh, piss off. Yeah, that's too much. Like, Did you do anything for Halloween, Jack? Or Unfortunately, no, because it's not like very much celebrated here. But mm -hmm. maybe maybe next year I'll find, try to find like a party somewhere, or just go mm -hmm. dressed up. I am looking to go to Comic-Con this year. Yeah. Or next year. Yeah, I might just go. You know, uh, have you seen House of the Dragon? No. That new uh, show? Not yet. So, what? Uh, okay. You know Game of Thrones? Mm -hmm. I might just go as a Targaryen. Just dye the hair blonde. Yeah. Get an armor. Yeah. Maybe just go like that. <laughs> where is Comic Con? Like, where's the one you could go to? Uh, Utrecht. Oh, so, so Utrecht. okay. They do come to the country. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. do come to the country. I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, it's kind of Halloween ish. It is. I can, very much. Yeah. I can get away with it. Like dye the hair like blonde whitish. Sure, you could. And um, I've heard people talk about this, but every time I, you know, either hear about it or see videos or pictures, it's there's a lot of, or there's some, maybe not a lot. There's some good-looking women like dressing up in cosplay. Why do you think I want to go? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they have speed dating. Oh. So it's like I already know that like the average man is overweight, and then I'm gonna go to Comic Con where a majority of men is overweight. So it's like yeah. fish in a barrel. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> but, the, but the problem is most hotties at Comic-Con are are, are uh, actresses, oh, are professional uh, cosplayers and things like that. So mm. Freaking Instagram, man. Man, I wish that just for one day I would get the attention a woman gets from a woman. <laughs> Like, you know that comic where um, they think they're one-upping us, where it's like, how would you feel if a woman would compliment on your appearance or smack your ass? I'm like, go for it. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on the woman, though, in all honesty. Like, there have been women who, like, pinch my ass where I'm like, fuck off. That's the thing, you know, at least here. And it sounds like it's the same in Netherlands. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a lot of overweight women here, man. Like, it's bad. Uh... Um, but not only women, just men in general. Everybody, but did yeah. You, yeah. Did you know that is such a weird thing about the pill as well? And we're going back to this. It is amazing. So, like, you've got the two phases of, like, menstruation. Or there are more, but kind of we'll, we'll divide it into two. So, apparently, the first phase of the cycle is the being attractive phase. 
Mm -hmm. where it's like, I want to get pregnant. And the second phase is the I am pregnant phase, where apparently in the first phase, uh, women tend to crave less calories because they want to be thinner, more attractive. It's like even biology says be thin to be attractive. It's, mm -hmm. it's hilarious. It's all in here. It is all in here. And the second phase, therefore, is craving for more calories. So apparently the pill makes women stuck in that second phase. Hmm. That's why women on the pill tend to gain weight. God, that's a, do you think, in your opinion, from what you've read so far, do you think a man could have written that and like not been totally like crucified? No. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, it no, wouldn't, no, have, been no, no, wouldn't no. have been available on Amazon. If a man no, but that, that's like I said, this woman covers her tracks. Where it's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, like as women, like the pill brought a lot of good things like a career and a job or no pesky pregnancies when trying to make something of yourself. It's like, mm -hmm. oof, oof. Like she really <laughs> tries to appeal to the ideologues with this. But yeah, if it, like if you like Rolo's work and you want a bit more on it from the other side, go read this. Same as uh, Marty Hazelton. Ever heard of her? No. Uh -uh. Doctor Doctor Marty Hazelton wrote Hormonal. So that's like the natural cycle of everything. So you can kind of predict female behavior, psychological behavior, things like that. It's also a good read. He's a uh, We've done a show on that even years ago, Rolo and I. It's pretty interesting. Like how women tend to dress certain ways depending on what phase she is in, mm -hmm. things like that, and her yeah. voice changes and things like that. It's interesting as hell. Like I always liked human psychology, but I never I never thought I would go this far into it. Mm -hmm. But oh well. And it's probably all like, uh, what's the term? Subconscious. Like they're not thinking about this. They're just, they're doing it. And oh, man. Life. I had a girlfriend once and she picked me up at work and she was wearing a red dress. I'm like, oh, I know what's happening. <laughs> she couldn't keep her hands off me in the car. It's like, nice. okay, yeah, I know. I know where this is going. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, the good old days. The good old days. <laughs> good stuff. I, I'm tempted to be like, well, Jack, what do you got going on this week? Any dates or anything? But I think no. you'll talk about that on Red Evening. No, like, I don't know. I kind of changed my evil ways. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Getting but it's out. like, I have the numbers. So I don't need to do it for that anymore. I got that out of my system, so to say. Mm -hmm. And now it really is like, I know how superficial this sounds, but it's like, if you're not at least X attractive, I'm not going out of the house. <laughs> it, it has gotten to that point where it's like a nap sounds more intriguing than a date. <laughs> I don't think that's uh, shallow at all. I think a lot of women kind of operate the same way, at least on these swipey apps. You know, well, mm. if he's, it's like you said, if he's not six feet tall, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to. Yeah, it's like, it's like the six feet thing. I don't take that to heart a lot. Because mm -hmm. women's spatial features are like not as great as men, That's so true. they tend they tend to just say six foot. While what they mean is he needs to be taller than I do, mm -hmm. or sorry, taller than I am. Apologies, horrible English. So every time she says that, I'm always kind of like, yeah, whatever, dear. Or like the six figs. It's like snowball's chance in hell you'll ever find out how much money I have. <laughs> right. I had a one hundred dollar watch by Fossil, F-O-S-S-I-L, which was gold-colored. Mm -hmm. It was gold-colored. Colored, so, not actual. <laughs> yeah, not actual gold. <laughs> Bitches went like, oh, that's such a beautiful watch. It's like, yeah, I know. It's like, of course, it's, of course, you love that watch. It's like, <sighs> <laughs> so, I mean, gold digging and shit like that, I, I don't take that to heart. I think gold diggers are made, in all honesty. That's self-inflicted. What's your opinion mm -hmm. on that? Uh, man, well, you're certainly not born that way. I think, yeah, it's a product of environment. And um, it's learned. I, I think you're right. I think it's learned behavior, whether it's Yeah, but uh, I think guys allow it, where it's like, she's not per se a gold digger. Like, you just are dumb enough to pay everything for her. 
Yeah, it's like those guys that get mad when they go out with a woman and they have a hundred dollar dinner that they pay for, including drinks, and then they're mad at the woman. It's just kind of like, well, you picked the place, you picked what to do. Why are you mad at the girl? Not to like stick up for them too much. But... Huh. I mean, I think it's weird as well. I had a couple of girls like buy me drinks. Nice. Yeah, well, like we went out on a date. I drove to them. We met at the train station and we were supposed to go for coffee. And we grabbed the coffee and she just bought, she just paid for it. She's like, well, you drove here. That's great. Yeah. So every time I hear these horror stories, I'm like, what? What the hell are you dating? Yeah. Like, mm. I haven't had to try to date anyone in about, God, what's it been? Well over a year. Like, yeah. How how is the girlfriend? Or uh... she's good. Uh, the candidate. I'm supposed to call her the candidate. Clary always gets on me. I can't call her girlfriend. Um, no, she's good. I was just so she lives down in Texas. Of course, right now I'm still up where I live in Chicago. So I do travel every uh, every couple of weeks. Chad dressed Jack dressed up as a furry. Interesting. <laughs> I have my uh, I have this lion thing. This let me see if I can grab it. Whoa. Okay. You're good. Yeah, okay. Hold on. <laughs> Reaching. So Dre's in the uh, chat. He actually met the candidate a few thing. weeks ago. <laughs> there we go. This thing. Oh, what are you doing with that? Oh, I bought that at the Siget Festival in Budapest. Cool. And I was wearing it for Halloween. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for our Halloween show. Cool. I was Conan the Barbarian, or at least I tried to be. Yeah, I can see that. Better than like Simba the Lion or whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> but no, the the candidate's good. Uh, going back there in a couple weeks. Um, and eventually I am going to end up down there. You know, I, I'm not really going to live where I live much longer. It's just, it's not a great place to live. Mm, Chicago, yeah. right? Yeah, Chicago. I would say, Jack, if you're in the US, it's a great place to visit, but Beyond that, yeah. Is Beetlejuice still mayor? Yes, until February, we are still stuck with Beetlejuice. I got to admit, I'm going to miss her because she's not going to be mayor after that, and I'll miss making fun of her. Like, she's just so fun to make fun of, but that's going to oh, end. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. You think there's a, there is a red wave coming, or? I haven't been following this as much. I, I think probably, yes, just because you probably read in the papers how terrible a lot of stuff is around here you know mm -hmm. uh, well you know you know inflation and the economy's bad gas prices i don't even want to know what petrol prices are in, in netherlands it's probably gone down but, um no there's just a lot of problems here so i would be pretty surprised if there's not a red wave but that's normal two years after the presidential election it always swings back in the other direction it, it happens almost all the time so, oh good yeah. I just hope it all ends well. I, in the Netherlands, too, there is just this this um, disdain in the air, you know. Like, is there? Yeah, is there a, a, um, dissatisfaction. People mm -hmm. are not happy. It's just this weird vibe in the air where it's like, oh, yeah. This is probably good. like that. Every It's like that in a lot of places, I bet. Mm -hmm. Strange yeah. times. Yeah, it's a strange world these days. But, I mean... Luckily, I've got my ass covered, at least sufficiently. I don't know, like nuclear war, I probably wouldn't survive that, but at least I had fun, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> That's what yeah, it's about. Exactly. You're having all kinds of fun. Did you have the day off today of, of work? Uh, well, I, I barely have a job anymore <laughs> because of the online thing. Mm -hmm. Like It's going so well, I like kind of fully work for myself that's fantastic yeah i'm very happy with it as well actually like every now and then i do like a shift at a factory like uh six in the morning till two in the afternoon because i get up very early mm -hmm. like if there's one thing i truly love about this working for myself thing making your own rhythm again like your natural oh. rhythm maybe it sounds a bit woo woo magical but like I never was a like nine to five guy. I never understood that. Or it's like, why can't I just start at six? Because especially in winter, when the days get darker, I could be falling asleep at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Just 
flat. Because, well, like, well, it's dark, people. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. No, you're absolutely right to avoid the nine to five because I had to do that for years, you know, to get the experience I needed to eventually work for myself. And I'll, I'll never go back. Like, I could be almost destitute and I just can't get another nine to five. I've, I've, I've had too much fun on the other side. <laughs> The only thing I would do, and I've been thinking about that, getting my uh, my forklift certificate. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because that's not that hard to get. And it, there, it's always, there's always somewhere they need a forklift driver. And a while back, I did a shift and I got to do order picking. Yeah. And I was able to like drive around in one of the warehouses with one of those order pickers and cool. i had the time of my life it was so much fun you could listen to listen to music in the meantime shit like that just drive around through that warehouse like this is amazing this is great so if i ever do have to return to like a nine to five or whatever i'm just getting my forklift certificate and mm. but i'm not going back to corporate no fuck no I'm telling you, once you taste the other side, it's it's just it's virtually impossible to go back. You're like, I've seen behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh my God. It's like, no, I have to listen to people who I know do not have my best interest at heart. Exactly. They're probably um, not as smart as you. That was the I, I this sounds arrogant, but I swear most of the bosses I had were just they were not as smart as the shit I was doing. So <sighs> I hate to say it, but I had the same experience in the gym and things like that. And it's like, I, it sounds so terribly arrogant, but yeah, sorry. It's it's true. <laughs> they're not efficient. They're, they're rigid. They're dogmatic. Mm -hmm. It's like, piss off. Even now, like, um, I have a shift on Thursday. I have one shift this week. And even there, like a couple of weeks ago, they were like, yeah, you know what? Corporate's been up our ass because blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I am so glad. I don't have to deal with this shit. I just pretend I'm in a moron. I just pretend I'm a moron in all honesty. Yeah. Yeah. No, in all honesty, because I, it's like I start at six, I leave at two. And it's like, yeah, can you clean the holes and things like that? I'm like, sure. Put in the earbuds, listen to a podcast. And it's like, that's oh, great. If they leave you alone to do something where you have full autonomy, that's the most tolerable oh, yeah. way to handle a nine to five. But a lot of times, yeah. In my field, you know, accounting, whatever, cubicle land, there's so much micromanagement that I was oh. like, nope, 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 nope. And that's why, I mean, I agree with you. That's why I could never go back to corporate. Exactly. The and it's, micromanagement. And they always say stupid stuff that's just like, they always blame everything on corporate. It's like, well, you know, we'd like to do that, but corporate says we can't. You know, there's no flexibility. It's rigid, no. like you said. It's horrible. Yeah, but it's like they never look at the end result. They always look at the method. Yeah, but you don't apply our method. Yeah, but am I getting the results you want? Right. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. We want a bit of unity. Screw your unity. <laughs> it's like, uh, at least that was always my uh, gripe with them. As you can imagine, I wasn't really a team player. <laughs> I, and you don't have to be at this point. I got to admit, I'm, I'm impressed and I'm a little bit jealous. Like, I, I never really planned on just becoming a YouTuber and make, and doing it full time and making money. But I'll bet it's awesome to be in that position that you and Cappy are in. It's pretty fucking awesome. The, yeah. the, like it, it hasn't really sunk in yet because yeah. this could end as well. Kind of thing. It's yeah. like, I, I have it now and now we're at the stages. How do I keep it? Where it's oh. like, the, the clients I have are great, but they need to rotate as well. Mm -hmm. It's like, I do want to get new clients and things like that. So it's in there where the new challenge lies, where it's like, okay, how we, can we keep this process going? Otherwise, we do have to go back, which I don't mm -hmm. want. Wish I could give you some of my clients because I enjoy firing them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not a CPA. I can that's yell at them for spending too much shit, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's an American thing, right? Like the the whole eating out, breakfast everywhere, lunch everywhere instead of at home. I I presume it is. I mean, I whenever I'm out, I'm walking around in the morning or I'm traveling or something. I'm just it shocks me. You look at the drive through to like I said, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. It's like ten to twelve cars deep every time. Well, I mean, why don't you just make coffee at home and take it with you on the way to work? That was so weird. 
when uh, we went to Philly, we got to the bed and breakfast, and I'm like, wait, you don't have a coffee maker? <laughs> wait, what? Why don't you have that? It's like, no, we, we get coffee... We get coffee elsewhere. Uh, that's, uh, exactly. But, oh just, well. And people don't understand that you know if you're if you're doing this every day, like it's just it, it adds up to be something astronomical. I've had to get on people and be like, "Will you stop going to Starbucks? Like this, don't you know?" Starbucks isn't even coffee. You know? No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's garbage. It is absolutely. I don't get that. I mean, I, I have my trusty filter machine right here. Like, See, I have a Keurig, and people really look down on me for that. They're like, that's not real coffee. <laughs> I know. I can tell, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, uh, fuck them. Fuck them. Let's wrap this one up. Um, I want a link to your channel real quick. Oh, I'll down. stick it on there. You want me to put it in the chat? Oh, yeah, please do. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys, I'm going on at 6 p.m. Central. I'm going to talk, tell you the story about how I fired a client a couple nights ago. Um, You're so, almost yeah. at 2K subscribers? That's getting there. Um, I think it's mainly accountants, but yeah, I'm getting up there. Uh, and I, it is like without, like Clary did a lot for me in terms of getting me subscribers. So I owe a lot of that to him, of course. And you guys, you know, you mentioned me on your show. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There we go. So, guys, here you can find Chad's channel. He's going on in a couple of hours. You can become a member for this channel, get access to weekly Q&As. And not only that, you will get my version of the Book of Pook, audiobook, for free, and get a Pokemon named after you because we're playing Pokemon during <laughs> the uh, membership streamcasts. Uh, what else we got? Uh, guys, I am a member, so I highly recommend Chad is it. a member. Yeah, you want to be like Chad? Become a member. <laughs> be a Chad. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, be a Chad. Become a member. It's just, it's just the truth. Speaking of truth, truth. Oh, oh, damn it! Damn it all to hell. There we go. Truth the mug. You can get that. Yeah, if you want to. Be ever so kind to like the video, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below your thoughts of this show. And with that, we cue the music. Take us out. chat still there oh. no no i'm here i didn't know i was supposed to do it <laughs> yeah take us out oh well i don't have music but i can say toodles do it toodles <laughs>